Hey there, comic book fans. I am back from the comic shop again this week. Oh, it's cold and rainy out there today. Four new comics. Um, no, no new true believers for myself in the stack, but I did get um, some for my friend Bob Wyacek, who I've been getting these for, um, so he can uh, use the inker on this one. I think I got some of these last week. I got some more in this week. Uh, he brings these, he's bringing these to cons, so he has something to sign for people. And he also did, he didn't do this Captain America story, a Captain Marvel story, but there's a backup story from Marvel Fanfare that he inked all these years ago. And this is a pretty good story. I don't think I'd ever read this one before. It's about, it's about um, Carol Danvers' Captain Marvel dealing with the death of uh, Marvel Captain Marvel. So I thought that I, I never read that story before and when I got that a few weeks ago um, I really enjoyed reading it. <laughs> Better than I like reading the lead story but I think I got them what? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these and another five of these. I think he already got 17 of these last week. So I'll have a bunch of stuff for you to sign if you see him at a con. Some uh, True Believers reprints of his work. Uh, and then, what I got for me, let's see what we have here. Let's start with Criminal, number three. I really enjoyed the last issue, probably because it was about a comic book artist, so I could, and, uh, and, and a comic book artist was a real, uh, a, a real bit of a handful. He's an old time comic book artist who is not a happy guy, doesn't get along with his family, He's in, it takes place in the late 90s. And um, he just doesn't like everybody. He's miserable. And he's trying to track down some old valuable artwork of his. And one of his assistants, we find out, who he insisted on helping him out during this con. And his assistant isn't in comics anymore. Hasn't been in comics in years. He went into the family business, which it turns out was some kind of crime. So now uh, this old comic book artist has... Um, got the uh, uh, help of his old assistant to try and steal some of his valuable artwork the, uh, back that he says was stolen from him. Um, fun story so far. Like I said, a lot of times I don't relate to Criminal, despite the fact that they're good stories. I don't relate to the... It's tough to feel sympathy for any of the criminals. But I feel some sympathy for these uh, t two old comic book artists. Well, one old, one not so old. But... Uh, this is uh, the first issue was a done in one. This is a two part story, and I think we got a couple another two part story before he gets into a. They're, they're, I think they're just doing however long an arc they want to do with these. There's no, um, it's it's not like um, they're doing six issue story after six issue story after six issue story. They're kind of going their own way with criminal. So good, good, good. Uh, Brew Baker and Philip stuff, and then. Talk about six issue story arc after six issue story arc is Kaiju Max season four, um, issue five. And these are six issue miniseries. Uh, da -da. There we go. Wrap around cover. Uh, I've been buying this since season two. I missed out on season one, but oh well, I'll get it sometime. The story of uh, giant monsters who are in prison and their robot or their. I guess they're, they're not technically robots. They're people inside giant robot armor guards. And this, and in kind of each each um, season is about some different thing. Like the first season I didn't read, I think was about the prison. The second season where I started was about one of the prisoners on parole. The third season was about the prison again. Now this fourth season is about a guard who got herself thrown into prison who's stuck in her giant robot suit. That's why she's in giant giant monster prison, I guess. So uh, this has been like, a, despite the fact that it's giant monsters, it's one of the most human of stories there is because it's, the, the, they give all, all, the, all the giant monsters of personalities and drives and ambitions and they're, you know, and there's lots of fun language in this. I think, think the giant robots call human beings squishers. Is the, and, and lots of other little little language things like that. That's pretty cool. Speaking of relaunching, I didn't know it was out today, but 
they relaunched Lazarus as Lazarus Reborn in number one. And I, I remember, I, I have all the issues of Lazarus. And I remember in the last, I, you know, it's been a hiatus for six or eight months or something. And they said in the last one, they might be changing format when it comes up and relaunching and this and that. And since they renamed it, it doesn't automatically go on my pull list. And now when I saw it, and it's a square bound $8 comic book. And I was just like, Ugh. I didn't even see it at the comic shop. I think it was um, Ghost Critic posted his copy of it that he bought. And I didn't see it till then. And I was just like, first of all, as my, if, if they just continued Lazarus, I'd still be buying it. But I don't like square bound comics because they don't lay open like they should. And I don't like eight dollar comics very much and i don't they're supposed to be i don't even know why it's eight dollars i think they're supposed to be adding stuff on the back but i don't and i think it's only supposed to be quarterly maybe it's like I, at this point i may as well get the trade paperbacks of lazarus if i'm gonna buy a square bound eight dollar comic which which probably means i'll never get this I'll, I'll never get the trade paperback of lazarus unless i see it somewhere for cheap but whenever i say i'm gonna get the trade paperback of something that means if I run into it cheap at some point in the future, which almost never happens, is that's the weird thing about trade paperbacks. There are so many super cheap trade paperbacks that, you know, I'd rather pay $4 for a trade paperback that I'm not that interested in than $25 for one that I am. And that makes me end up not buying any of them. Um, but anyway, this is good stuff. Like I said, I said, I'll get the trade paperback of season one one of these days. Never did. Let's see what else we got left here. Monstrous, number 21. Really liked... Uh, uh, Monstrous has been picking up the pace lately because there's a war on. Um, last issue just came back from it. I think it was on it. Was it on a hiatus? Well, last issue came back. Lots of stuff happened. Our, our little crew of uh, the She-Wolf's daughter and the little fox person and the little cat all got broken up in the last couple of issues. Now they're all trying to find each other again because there's danger going on and the old gods are coming back and all sorts of fun stuff is happening in Monstrous right now. So I'm really enjoying it. It's always, it's always got some, some nice fantasy artwork in it. Um, you know, been on it for 21 issues now and, uh, I'm sticking with it. And then the new issue one I got is The Life and Death of Toyo Harada. Uh, I don't know if this is a continuing series or a mini series, but um, Toyo Harada, my, my two favorite of the newly relaunched Valiant series were Harbinger and um, The Imperium. And Harbinger, Toyo Harada was the villain in, and it, it was written by Joshua Dysart, the arts by Kafu. And the um, I wouldn't, if it wasn't written by uh, Joshua Dysart, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have bought this because Valiant's got a lot of new people on their stuff who I'm not new creators. I don't have any, you know any interest in them. I don't know who they are. A lot of like uh, Britannia, I bought and enjoyed, uh, but I knew the writer and the artist on it. Um, and Cafu's a pretty good artist, and I re and the Imperium starred Toyo Harada uh, as the villain. And he's kind of a sympathetic villain because he's trying to make the world a better place. Let's see if I can get you some good some Cafu artwork. I guess they're recapping his origin again, since there's the, his life and death. And he's a villain. He, he's a, what do they call him? An Omega level level Psyot. So he's one of the most powerful guys in the Valiant universe. Some more Cafu artwork for you. And I just thought, like, I, en I enjoyed uh, Harbinger. And I really enjoyed the Imperium with kind of him, the villain, in the lead. Lots of geopolitics going on in the Imperium. So I, I can't wait to read this. The one thing that's putting a damper on everything is this is a $5 comic. Why is this a $5 comic? Uh, it, it, it doesn't feel any thicker than a normal Valiant comic or any of these other comics. It's the, matter of fact, Monstrous is a better cover stock. This doesn't even have that nice uh, cover stock that Britannia had. 
This has just got the stupid same, just about, it's got a slightly thicker cover. It's not quite self-covered. It's that same thin, it's, it's like, why is this $5? It'd be, you know, I might not have even bought this if I want to, before I put it on my pull list, if I saw it was $5, just because, but I, I'm really looking forward to it, but I'm really not looking forward to having a $5 series on my uh, pull list, but, uh, but there we go. Toyo Harada, I'll let you know how it is. Now we'll look at a little artwork. I've just finished this one today. I was working on another Dreams of Things cover. I like the way this one came out. Lots of texture, lots of little hints of color and lines and fun stuff like that. But I also have been doing some of these tiny little fantasy landscape drawings. And I'm thinking about making one of my big ink drawings in this style. I'm not sure if I'll go color, but I, I might just keep it black and white. I, I'm not sure, but these are just small little, but I might go color. Fantasy landscapes I draw where they're drawn right in ink. And then I come in with a watercolor and lay that down. And I'm not a huge landscape person, but I, I do these every now and then. I, I kind of like these strange sci-fi fantasy cityscapes with this completely invented architecture. So like I said, I might might do one of my one of my big ink drawings over here on that. So look at a little another dreams of things and two, three, four, five, six little ones. Uh a little busy lately. Alright, so you guys have a good week out there.